to another episode of Thai Girl Talk with Mia from Learn to Speak Thai and Lonnie from Tell Thai Heart. Where are we now? <laughs> <laughs> What are we doing here today? <laughs> well, we are in a studio with y e l e o n g and for those of you who are in the uh, Thailand blogging community, mm-hmm. yes. you will already know who he is. Right? Yeah. And today is my first day meeting him in person. Mm-hmm. I've been following his blog and on his website for a long, long time. So, for those of you who don't know Hugh, he has his own website called. Called Retire to Thailand with the number two dot com, and then he also writes uh, for Women Learn Thai. Um, is it every week? Once a month, usually. Oh, once okay. a month. Okay. Or when when the feeling hits me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people know about you in regards to how long have you been in Thailand. Um, I first came to Thailand in 1969. I haven't lived here all that time, but uh, but altogether, I would say probably about 15 years living in Thailand. Wow. But in 1969, I came as a Peace Corps volunteer, and I taught uh, in Chiang Mai at the u p a r a t w i t i l a i School. Um, but I, I stayed here three years, and uh, I went home, got a, a master's degree in teaching English as a, a to speakers of other languages, and came back. And taught at the Royal Thai Naval Academy, and then later at Chiang Mai University. Um, after that, I was the director of uh, AUA Chiang Mai. When my children were little, I wasn't making enough money to support them on the AUA salary, so we left. Eventually, ending up in uh, Seattle, Washington, and um, stayed there for the next 20 years. Wow. Changed careers. I became a computer consultant. Then I did have enough money to raise my kids. When it came time to retire, I started thinking back on Thailand, and that's what brought us back. Yeah, that's oh, interesting. Okay. Let's go back to um, why did you think of Thailand to come back to retire? Well, Thailand is a, a retirement haven uh, for a lot of people. A lot of people think of it because the cost of living, because of the climate, and and mm-hmm. the really nice people here. Since I had already had an inn here, I had already lived in Thailand for nine years. We thought, eh, let's go back, see what it's like, and um, right. you know, maybe it'll be something that uh, in the future we'll think about. So after. 20 years, or almost 25 years of not being in Thailand, uh, we came back. <laughs> ah. So after being back the next year, and then we came back and lived in Thailand for what I call a staggered retirement or a trial retirement. Mm-hmm. We weren't sure we wanted to live here, right. uh, and this is something I recommend if anybody's thinking of living anywhere without having lived there before, is to try it out first. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so we came back. For 10 days the first time, and then for uh, a month the second time, and then the next year after that we came back for two months and ended up. We did that for about six years, and we ended wow. up spending about four months every year living right. in Chiang Mai. Well, it seems like a lot of good reasons to live in Thailand. But for you, he personally, if you could think about the number one reason that you hear, the what number would one be? reason yes. I'm here. Yes, geez, I, you know, I never thought of that. <laughs> well, we ran away from the cold. That's mm-hmm. one thing. Uh, we ran to a place that has really good food, really nice people, mm-hmm. um, and um, our retirement. Income, which isn't much, I live off of social security and a little savings, goes a lot further here. So Thailand is getting more expensive, but I live off of the Thai economy. I eat Thai food. A house doesn't have a lot of foreign amenities; just a regular house. I have a motorcycle and ten-year-old car, but that's the way we've always lived, and that's why uh, we could retire fairly early. Mm-hmm. Uh, I retired at the age of 55, and the reason I did that was we were frugal all our lives. We saved. Now I have. Enough, and I've always had enough. That's how you can retire early. Retirement to me is complete freedom if you have enough. The questions I get usually center around how much does it cost to retire here? What's the uh, healthcare situation mm-hmm. in Thailand? Of course, uh, these are probably the two most important questions I have. Now, I've written a lot on cost of living in Thailand. If you live 
like a Thai mm-hmm. and the Thai economy, mm-hmm. you'll probably be fine. If you need uh, foreign imported goods, imported foods, a uh, new car every couple of years, uh, a 650 Kawasaki motorcycle, then you might have a little more trouble affording living here. So it all depends on you. Everybody is different. They have their own needs. They have their own lifestyles. Mm-hmm. Living here, as I do, very simply, you should have no problem. I can't say exactly how much it would cost you to live here, but again, it all depends on you. For me, I spend around 60000 baht a month mm-hmm. uh, for me and my wife, two of us. So that's about $2,000, which is just about what uh, my Social Security brings in. So uh, I'm living on what I'm making yeah. um, mm-hmm. and not worrying about anything else. Now, who knows? The prices may go up again. I'm not sure. But that's the first thing. The other question about medical uh, or right. health care, it turns out that we just happen to be some of the luckiest people in the world because Thailand has decided to become a medical tourism center. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That means that in various towns around the country, there's one or two or more hospitals that are set up for foreigners mm-hmm. to be treated. What we do is uh, we use the Chiang Mai Ram Hospital, which is considered the best hospital here, the most expensive. We do what everyone should do about their health. Number one is we take care of our health before we get sick. Thailand is a great place for uh, eating fresh foods, right. uh, not eating too much, not getting too much overweight, uh, taking care of your health in that way. It's also a good place for outdoor activities, walking or running or climbing mountains, or if you're down south, uh, swimming and you know sailboarding. And there's mm-hmm. so many things to do that will keep you healthy. The, the second part of being healthy is uh, preventive care. And so we get a checkup at the hospital every year. Mm, and okay. the checkups here are very, very thorough. For a checkup, the cost of a really, really good checkup, I mean, we're talking about all kinds of blood tests, ultrasounds, mm-hmm. and all the things that you could possibly think of, is probably less than the cost of a meal at a fancy restaurant in America. You know, the cost of a checkup is really, really well worth it. And then if anything goes wrong, they have well-trained doctors here, a lot of them are foreign-trained, uh, America or Europe, uh, as well as uh, nurses, and most of them uh, can communicate fairly well in English. I mean, English is the common language in the medical field. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that includes dentists as well. Oh, yeah, dentists are really cool. For instance, uh, I, I go to get a checkup uh, once a year, which costs about $10, and a cleaning and everything. So a cleaning, checkup, and all that is maybe it costs $20. Now, the question that I usually get is about insurance, you know, health insurance. But I don't have a health insurance here. What I have okay. is a uh, bank account with a certain amount of money I've just put in there, and I've forgotten about it. Uh, the way I determine how much money I put into the bank was how much it cost to get a bypass, a heart bypass <laughs> operation. Okay, yes. <laughs> Just in case it happened. Right? I don't it's think about it as bad as it could <laughs> right. get, right? Yeah. Now, if I eat well and do the exercises, right. I won't have to do And if I don't sit down and drink beer all day, I, I probably won't have, have to do that. But that's how much money I've put away oh, interesting. for each of us, for one for me, one for my wife. And uh, so we could go and get two bypass off. Just for you fun, know. right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just for fun. Right? Oh, yeah, your base is covered. Uh, yeah, and that's how we covered our base. Now, if, if anything went r- seriously wrong, we would first go to Chiang Mai Ram Hospital, mm-hmm. the most expensive one. Right. And then if we had to get something like surgery or some other procedure that would be very expensive, I would do that at the local government hospital. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the government hospital in Chiang Mai is very good, but also maybe a third the cost of Chiang Mai. Right, Hospital. right. So that's how I would I would do that. Okay. All the preventive care, all the checkups and everything, I get at Chiang Mai Ram. It's more expensive, but the weights are almost zero. You know, yeah. I can walk in and say, I want a CAT scan, and they would say, okay, go up to the fourth right. floor and we'll give you a CAT scan. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't wait, and if I needed to see a, a specialist, I could see that person within minutes, literally within minutes. See, um, my husband just has the appendicitis surgery. Uh-huh. Um, um, two months ago, of course, we, we live in Thailand, but we didn't have the health insurance. So, but we went to the best hospital, Chiang Mai Ram, and it costs around 60,000 baht, which mm-hmm. is two thousand right, dollars right. just in case the listener have an idea how much it costs that's a big surgery you know yeah. for appendicitis and right. then just two thousand yeah. dollars yeah and the, the thing is that service is also very very good yeah well, did you, you talk opposite. about this on your blog here uh, I've, I've written a number of, of times about uh, medical care especially uh, the annual checkup there's my blog has you if you do a search on annual checkup you'll, you'll find that right okay that's good well speaking of misconceptions What do you feel like are the most common ones about retiring in Thailand? 
there are two. I thought about this question. There, there are two uh, um, misconceptions. One is that Thailand is a third world country. It's backward. And the second misconception is Thailand is a paradise. Uh, huh. hmm. First of all, Thailand used to be a third world country. Thailand is developed. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. it's past tense now. Mm -hmm. If you go to Bangkok or you go to a, a lot of the, I was just in Hat Yai down in the south. I mean, these places are bustling, all uh, businesses and uh, all modern. Right. Every single person, it seems, in this country has a cell phone, iPhone, uh, an iPhone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. it's it's not a backward country anymore. Three Western supermarkets. Oh, there's it's called everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. Everything you could yeah. get from the West. Top supermarket and. Um, big C and big yeah big C and Lotus and uh, you know these things didn't exist before you know so Thailand is not a third world country anymore you can get everything you need here. right and the other part Thailand is a paradise mm -hmm. well it's really not a paradise it's comfortable <laughs> um, but it can be but it can be as a, a, a nice a place as you'd ever want to be you know it has great beaches it has great mountains and all that but you have to live a lifestyle that allows you to be uh, uh, happy and comfortable. Uh, so it's it's not a paradise where you don't do anything. You have to really work at being happy, just as you would anywhere in the world. Right. That's so, well said. Yeah. So those are the the two misconceptions. One, they're both on either yeah. side of the spectrum. Right. You know? Yeah. So Thailand's right in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Hugh, for joining us in the studio. But stay tuned for next week. We have part two when Hugh talks about his secrets to living a happy life in Thailand. That's right. And if you have any comments or feedback or questions for Hugh, please visit his website. Till the next time. สวัสดีเจ้า